films which show a battle between good and evil are, are very popular and have been popular really for a long time. So, um, for example, at the moment, comic book films are all the rage and they always show a battle between good and evil. But we could look to um, other examples, uh, things like the James Bond films, that's always a good battle between good and evil. Uh, Lord of the Rings, great big epic film. Um, one of my favourites, Gladiator, that's a great film. Uh, or uh, Star Wars, you know, enduring good and evil film. Um, and so I wonder if you have a particular favourite film or maybe a, a book that has this whole idea of good versus evil. Um, last week, we heard about the brash faith of impulsive Peter who asked Jesus if he could join him as Jesus walked on the water. We obviously know what happened to Peter. At that moment, he soon began to sink. And whilst it seemed a ridiculous request in many ways, um, I don't think asking to walk on water is a question that many people would ask. What it is, is it's an example of faith from uh, within the Jewish community. And so today's gospel reading gives us an example of the life of faith but from a very different perspective. So first of all, uh, it's not impulsive faith. It is a faith that comes from a place of struggle, of a real battle. Uh, specifically, uh, we hear about a woman's daughter who is tormented by a, a demon. And it is an example of someone having faith in Jesus to heal um, through what would probably have been uh, a long-term battle. One of the significant themes we see in the Gospels again and again is this battle between good and uh, evil and how Jesus overcomes evil in a whole host of different ways. So um, today's reading is an example of one of those where we see this exorcism of those who have been possessed by demons. But Jesus overcomes uh, this battle between um, evil in other ways, such as uh, physical healings or forgiveness of sins uh, and ultimately, of course, uh, Jesus overcome the evil through the cross and the resurrection. The life of faith, as we know it, in some ways, is not dissimilar to this woman and to her daughter. That we all face our own battles, and some of them um, will be long-term struggles. Uh, and our response is perhaps not always impulsive like Peter. Our response is maybe a bit more like this woman, one of, of desperation, of longing for breakthrough and change. But this example of faith goes even further and is different in another significant way when we compare it to Peter. Uh, today's Gospel reading, uh, as well as the other readings from Isaiah and Romans, are examples of faith from outside of the Jewish com community. Uh, people coming from the, the outside of a community they usually stick out like a sore thumb. Um, so, for example, whether it's a, a tourist who's travelling to a foreign country for their holiday, uh, it's perhaps uh, someone who has moved to another part of the country, or it's a travelling away football fan, um, to name a few examples. And uh, often their difference can be seen in, in things such as perhaps the colour of their skin, their accent, perhaps what they wear, perhaps it's none of these things, perhaps it's different things altogether. Um, an example of this is um, my wife Sarah, her experience of going to a university in Falmouth, where uh, Falmouth being in Cornwall is about as far away from Tadcaster as it's possible to be, Tadcaster being just outside of York where uh, she grew up. and. Uh, Sarah doesn't have a very strong northern accent, but going to university in Cornwall, where almost everyone else is from the south, her accent stuck out like a sore thumb. And particularly, um, some people really let her know about it. Jesus knew full well that the woman who started to shout at him was not part of the Jewish community. Uh, she is described as a Canaanite woman, uh, a long-time 
enemy and very much a foreigner to the Jewish people. And so her, her outsider identity would be very obvious to Jesus. Um, Jesus, at this point, is now some distance from Israel. Presumably, he's there to lay low for a while, perhaps to um, avoid the, the large crowds. Maybe he wants a bit of peace and quiet. He thinks that would be lovely. I'll go far away from where lots of people know me. We all know there's times when um, everything seems to just be getting too much and we just want a bit of space. Well, this foreign woman starts shouting at Jesus in desperation, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. And this cry for help demonstrates her acknowledgement of who Jesus is, which is quite incredible. Um, son of David was a Jewish title given specifically to the Messiah. And so the interaction between Jesus and this woman demonstrates the priority that Jesus was giving to his uh, Jewish people. And she seems to serve an ex as an example uh, of those who will receive the blessings of God, but not yet. And so that's why Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which seems very um, stark to our modern ears. when we are often told about the importance of inclusion. It's perhaps a bit like um, applying for, for some of the grants that we have been applying for, for the construction of St Hilda's. The grant applications always have some kind of criteria. For example, they support community work, and so you have to demonstrate how your project will benefit the community. But some of the grant bodies also um, only give money to work in a particular area of the country. And so a bit like this woman, if you don't happen to live in the right part of the country, you are not eligible. Of course, for the woman, it was not just about living in the wrong place, it was also being part of the wrong family. And so despite not fitting the criteria, this woman is persistent in her request to Jesus. Despite Jesus's mission beginning with the Jews and the fact that it is only after his death that the Christian faith would spread throughout the world, Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. She serves as an example of that which is to come, which we see in both of our other readings. So from Isaiah 56, verses 7 and 8, For my house, that's God's house, shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Or from Romans 11.32, For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. And so we see this example of how God will one day gather all people. But at the moment, his mission is first and foremost to the Jewish community. And so if Peter is an example of impulsive faith, this woman is an example of perseverance and not taking no for an answer. Uh, faith in Jesus is, of course, expressed very differently, depending on the circumstances or the individual. Uh, sometimes we need to be impulsive and respond to the situation in front of us. So if someone we know or meet asks us about our faith, that is the time to react in that moment. It could be that we've been praying for them for years, that's the perseverance, but we need to take our opportunities. And so Peter took his opportunity when Jesus was on the water. But there are other times when we are facing long-term struggles and perhaps are ready to give up hope. That is when persistence is required. This willingness to ask God for answers to our prayers we have not seen answered takes boldness and it takes the courage of this Canaanite woman. And so Jesus essentially responds to her request. Now's not the time. Not that it's never the time, but now is not the time. I cannot imagine that this woman had any less faith than Peter. They were both filled with the realities of faith and with the struggles of life. But because of her answer to Jesus, 
he commends her faith. But when the circumstances arise, are you willing to be persistent with God in prayer? Are you willing to put in the time and the effort that it takes? Because there is a battle between good and evil, and it's not ended. And so our prayers form part of that battle. We're not simply asking God to be merciful to our request. We are praying against the evil forces of our world. And ultimately, evil will not win because of the cross, because Jesus has already won the victory for us. But in the meantime, we know the realities of life and the struggles uh, that come with that. And so whatever we are going through, we hold on to faith in Jesus, who has won the victory over even death itself. Let us take courage from the example of the Canaanite woman and her faith in Jesus, that through our struggles, he hears our prayers. Amen.